concern to me as a Audubon member, as a public speaker, is trying to gather a diverse audience to bring into this conversation. Typically, when I go out to talk to the public, I find myself talking to the choir, people who are already believers in the need um, to reduce pollution, to save the earth. But that's only half of the people. The other half of the people are denying that climate change is even existing or that it's even necessary to, to try and find solutions. I would like to get a diverse audience together in a conversation in the same room, both believers and deniers. I would like to hear your thoughts about the usefulness of doing that and, and how to do that, please. Yeah, I think it depends on are they if it's too polar opposite. <laughs> um, I'm not sure at the end of the day the the um, solution or time will have been beneficial. Um, but if you know, my whole thing is if you start off with the same goal in mind, which is to leave planet Earth in a way that there's resources and um, ability for future generations to live here, you know, then at least you're, and you can agree on certain principles to begin with. I think there's a lot of value in, you know, having different people in the room who bring different things to, to the table. Um, but I've seen, you know, many times where if it's just, you know, climate denier, um, coming, you know, from, you know, there is no such thing as human-caused climate change to someone who wants to come up with strategies and ways to mitigate climate change. I'm not sure <laughs> you're going to get that much out of that. Um, so, you know, one of our, you know, at EcoWatch, you know, we believe the consensus of 97% of the world's climate scientists that say climate change is human induced and that the you know release of greenhouse gases is warming our planet. So you know so if you're starting at that premise, I think that there's you know a lot of value in bringing in people who may not you know think that that particular wind project is good, you know, but you're both understanding that something has to get done. So, um, convening conversations like that is fantastic. I um, typically will speak out at this um, conference in Arde, um, and you know um, Chip Cummins puts it on and is able to bring together people from all over the world. And we're not all on the same page. Um, many different backgrounds and philosophies and thoughts but we can all have conversations that end up leading to a more positive solution. Um, but you have to, I think, have common, some common ground to start with to, to get to that level. And um, I'm under the assumption, which could be wrong, that most Audubon members probably believe in, believe that climate change is human cause. Do you think that that's true? Um, there, the, the jury is out on that because even in my own group, my own network of conservation people, people there are people who are on the fence. I've heard things like, we're already at the tipping point and it's nearly too late, or it is too late. Or there are those who will argue about the composition of greenhouse gases as though that, like that's the most important issue. Uh, and I don't, I don't think it is. Uh, we need to get out of the weeds on, on this discussion and, and, and look at the greater good. And so that's where I am, I am at, uh, trying to include the people who, who want to talk about the science to that extent and those who are kind of uh, on the fence, along with those who are saying, yes, I, I believe in the science, you're doing right. So that's kind of where I am, uh, trying to be an includer of all points of view. Yeah, and I, th I think that's important, clearly, to allow them as members of Audubon to have their say. Um, and of course, I think Audubon as a organization has certainly come out, from what I understand, 
in that they do believe the consensus of 97% of climate scientists. Is it true? Oh, absolutely. The National Audubon Society is, is fully on board with mm -hmm. that. Um, and I, I would like to know what to say to somebody who's saying, that's bogus. Uh, study that came up with that number. You know, what do you say to people like that? That's, that's my, um, um, the area that I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, and it, it's not this one study, right, of course, that came up with that humans are contributing to climate change. Um, it's hundreds, I'll even go as far as saying thousands of scientists um, and there just was a new study that consensus on consensus. So it was all this, these scientists coming together, climate scientists coming together that again say there's now consensus on the consensus that 97% of the world's climate scientists believe climate change is human induced. Um, we're fortunate to have Michael Mann as one of our, one of EcoWatch's Insights writers. He's one of the most um, world-renowned climate scientists, and he's uh, he has the hockey stick theory, which is very famous, um, that shows exactly what they predicted was going to happen with the warming of, of the climate. So, you know, I think there's plenty of information out there that is, I think, digestible for most people that clearly explains what's going on. Um, and then, you know, we have many nations feeling, you know, the impacts of climate already, and so there's lots of stories to be told there. Um, so I think that bringing people together with the same or different viewpoints is very beneficial, assuming, you know, I, I don't have much tolerance <laughs> to debate people who, you know, absolutely think that the climate, the climate change is just a nat natural phenomenon and that humans don't have any piece of it. So, um, you know, we've been really fortunate with the support um, and ideology around Pope Francis um, and his encyclical on the, cl on the, on, um, the planet and climate change has had a huge impact on educating and bringing more people in. And I know that when the report came out about two years ago with Audubon, that um, it was one of the leading scientists, birders, right, that um, authored the study. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming that that rallied a lot of Audubon members to more clearly understand the issue at hand. Clearly, it did. It's, it is a valuable piece of, of science. Yeah. So, you know, I think that, you know, it's a time to continue to educate people on these issues, um, not necessarily get in fights at Thanksgiving dinner, but, um, you know, take, you know, we're fortunate today to have social media and have it so prevalent in people's lives. Some people may disagree with that, but it does provide a way for people to share what matters to them. And people are always like, I, I feel hopeless, what should I do? And, you know, we have a voice and we can use it in so many different ways today with social media being one of them. And I think it, it lends a really unique and exciting opportunity to get more people um, contact.